Hey, thank you for joining us. We are praying that our resources will strengthen you, uh, strengthen your faith in God, and that your love for others will grow as a result of watching with us here. If you're not a part of a church community group or a part of a church in general, then would you reach out to us and let us point you in the right direction. We would love to invite you to our community here at Anchor Church or help you get connected at a church that might be a good fit for you. So as we begin, uh, grab a Bible, grab a pen, a notebook, and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through His Word today. Prayer is a key part of the Christian life. During his earthly ministry, Jesus frequently found time to pray. And in the book of Acts, the early church prayed often. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, Paul even writes, uh, never stop praying. He says, pray without ceasing. During these difficult days, many people have been driven to prayer. And we've prayed for things like good health, We've prayed for protection for others. We've prayed for provision for people in need. And all of these requests are, are good requests. And the Bible teaches us to pray and to ask God to meet these specific needs. And when we study the letters of Paul to the various churches, we actually see that there are other important things for which we can also be praying. Paul loved the church. He prayed for it. He prayed for its needs to be met both physically and spiritually. And Paul's prayers for the church are filled with hope and truth. He recorded some of these prayers in his letters to the churches that we can still read today. And Paul's prayers would have been a great encouragement to those churches in the first century. And God can still use these same prayers to encourage the church today. So for the next several weeks, we want to read, study, and pray these prayers together. And we hope that you'll be encouraged as we focus on the prayers of Paul together. The, the first of Paul's prayers that we're going to study is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. So I want to read this together, if we can. It says this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. This letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica, to you who belong to God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. We proudly tell God's other churches about your endurance and faithfulness and all the persecutions and hardships that you are suffering. And God will use this persecution to show his justice and to make you worthy of his kingdom for which you are suffering. In his justice, he will pay back those who are persecuting you. And in this next section, he talks about um, these people who are persecuting the church. God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears or comes back from heaven. And he will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will be punished with eternal destruction, forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. When he comes on that day, he will receive glory from his holy people, praise from all who believe, and this includes you, because you believed what we told you about him. So keep on praying. We keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. And this is the prayer we're going to look at. We keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things that your faith prompts you to do. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with him. This is all made possible because of the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's prayer for the Thessalonians in verses 11 and 12 this is the part that I want us to spend just a few minutes discussing. This is a prayer that I want you to consider for your own life, and really a prayer that we can consider together as a church during this season. In verse 11 here, it, Paul says, So we keep on praying for you. 
we keep praying for you, asking God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. That's the first part. And then uh, asking God to give you the power or the ability to accomplish all the good things that your faith prompts you to do. Now, Paul has two requests. First, he prays that God would enable the, the people of Thessalonica, the Thessalonians, to live a life that is worthy of their call. So what does Paul mean by this? D.A. Carson actually mentions that it's important to remember that in Paul's writings, the call of God is always effective. Uh, in other words, those who are called by God are truly saved. And so, in other words, Paul is not praying that the, Thessal the Thessalonians might somehow become worthy enough to be called. No, since these Thessalonians are already Christians, uh, they have already been called, and now Paul actually prays that they might live up to that calling. The, the way I see it is that Paul wants us to be fitted into God's purpose for us in his kingdom. And since we're already a part of his kingdom by faith, when we submit to Jesus as Lord and Savior, then simply put, we are becoming what we already are. When God calls us to himself and saves us, he desires for our new lives to, to be conformed to the new status that we have, that we are now children of God. Now, we're already children of God when we receive his gift of love and forgiveness. So now we're motivated to start seeing how that gets fleshed out in our day-to-day -day lives. We're learning to be who God sees us as when he looks at us. We're becoming what he already sees us to be. He, we're becoming who we already are in Jesus. We're becoming worthy or fit for the high status that God has already given us. And so if God and his children, I should say, if, if God's children really have nothing to fear, that means that we're learning through all of the ups and downs in life what it looks like to live without unhealthy fear. If God's children are dearly loved by God, then by faith we're learning or maybe unlearning the insecurity of always doubting our Father's love. We're becoming more confident over time that our Heavenly Father really does love us. You see, He already sees us as His dearly loved children. He already sees us as seated with Him in heavenly places, ruling and reigning with Him. So over time, we're learning how to be courageous and faithful to follow him into everything that he has planned for us. And we're, we're, we're following him with glad-hearted obedience. And that takes time. It takes time to become people like that and to become the, become the way that God already sees us. So, you know, just so we don't become overwhelmed by having to, to be something or do something, you know, at the core of who we are and, and who we're becoming because of God's work in our lives, uh, Paul reminds us that God is the one who enables all of this. He enables this and his spirit empowers us to do it. It's all done by the, the grace of God or the good favor and the gifts of God toward us. Paul prays and asks God to do this in the lives of the Thessalonian Christians. And of course, it's our prayer that God would do this work inside of us too. Paul's second request is that God would, as, as it says here, give the Thessalonians, the, uh, give you the power to accomplish all the good things that your faith prompts you to do. I love the way he puts it. It couldn't be any plainer to empower you to, to do all or to accomplish all the good things that your faith is prompting you to do. Now, part of living a life that would be worthy of God's call includes acting in faith on the impulses that come to us through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It couldn't be any plainer here. God gives us the ability to do the good things that we believe God wants us to do. God uh, will give us the ability to do what we believe we can do because of what we believe about, about God. And we pray in line with what we know is true about God, even if our circumstances tempt us to believe differently about God or differently about ourselves. Here's what I mean. When someone really believes that God could do anything, then they're going to pray like it. When someone believes that God loves people, their, their faith or their belief in that truth is going to lead them to show love to those same people. A lack of love toward 
people really is a lack of faith in God's love for those people. And so Paul's praying that God would give them the the power or the ability to do all of these good things that their faith is prompting them to do. These impulses to do good things really are are rooted in our faith in, in, in God. And they're also prompted by God's Holy Spirit at work within us. And, and this teaches us that, really, uh, it, it teaches me when, when I've got an idea to do something nice for someone, then I should do it. Uh, it teaches all of us that when it crosses our minds to give someone some money, I should do it. When the thought strikes me that I should check on someone and see how they're doing, then by all means, I should do it. That's what, that's what Paul is praying. He's praying for us that because we believe certain things to be true about God, that God would give us the energy and ability to show love to others. And, and I think for us, it's a good question to just ask, how might the Spirit be prompting you to do good this week? Is, is what you believe about God prompting you to do good things? Things like praising and worshiping God in the middle of hardship or, or, or prompting us to do good things like acts of kindness towards others or maybe it would be showing mercy towards someone who's treated you poorly. I think we all should take some time as we study this prayer to just ask God to make, make us sensitive to the Spirit's leading this week. Ask God to give you the confidence to follow His leading in all of this. Well, after making these two petitions, Paul actually gives us the goal for his prayer here. In verse 12, Paul prays and he says, Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with him. Now, wouldn't that be something? That the name of Jesus would be honored because of how we lived our lives. Well, this happens because of God's work in our lives over time. As God works to make believers worthy of their calling, and as God enables them to do the good things that they, are, uh, that they find to do, then the name of Jesus will be honored through that. This makes me want to pray this prayer every day this week. And Paul also prays that the Thessalonians would be honored uh, along with Jesus when Jesus is honored. And, and I think this would have been very encouraging for the Thessalonians to hear. They had experienced a lot of persecution, a lot of dishonor because of the name of Jesus. They, like us, fell into hard times. And they endured seasons of suffering. And, and they particularly went through a season of persecution. And Paul wanted them to know some of the things that we need to know and remember. Paul wanted them to know that one day... After Jesus returns and sets everything right, his people will be vindicated. They will be honored. They will stand with him in his glory. And someday God will set the record straight. He will make the wrong things right. And we will be in a place of honor with God forever because we believed him, because we believed the message about him when someone shared it with us. Even when we we don't understand we trust him. Even when we don't have all the answers, we follow him. And this is good news for a searching soul. It's good news for people like like me who are just prone to doubt and discouragement. God will honor us for trusting him. So get this, as we study this passage, he's going to do all the work in us And then we're going to keep trusting him, uh, doing all the good things that we're prompted to do by trusting him. And then he's going to be honored in our lives, in and through our lives. And then he's going to share his honor with us someday. Think about that for a second. He's going to share his honor with us someday. How generous. After having done all the work, how generous. And and what a glorious future we have in Jesus because of this, this passage. This gives us hope that in the midst of everything we're going through, knowing that that presently God is at work in us and that in the future he will set everything right for us is a glorious thought. And then Paul ends his prayer here for the Thessalonian church by just stating the, the basis of his prayer from verse 12 there. Paul writes this, This is all made possible because of the grace of our Lord, our God and Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, even though Paul had already started his letter here with the idea of God's grace in verse 2, and then he goes on to talk about um, God's grace throughout those verses, he actually, in the, in the end of his prayer, he feels compelled to sum up the prayer with another reminder of God's grace. God's grace, his goodness and his favor to us is just woven throughout this entire section and throughout Paul's prayer for us. I mean, Paul's entire prayer seems to be rooted in gratitude, just gratitude for God's grace. When, when we understand just all that God wants to do in our lives, when we understand that it's possible, really it's more than possible, all that God has intended for us will certainly be accomplished in our lives because of God's grace. It not only gives us hope, but it encourages us to just be humble too. I mean, there are times, you know, in times when we feel like we can't possibly live for God or live up to our calling for God and God's calling in our lives today. We have the promise of his grace in our lives. We have the promise that he is gracious to us and, and his grace is at work giving us hope that we can follow him into whatever he's called for us to do. And then in times when we might be tempted to take credit for the good things that God is, is doing in our lives or the good things that we do, all the good things that we have impulses to do, uh, the reality of God's grace at work in us really makes it possible uh, that keep us humble. Because all that we were doing, all that we're able to do, it's empowered by His grace at work in our lives. So it's just this wonderful counterbalance of His grace uh, empowering us when we don't have the ability. And then at those times where we do step out in faith and follow Him, then uh, we have to look back on it and just say, God, you had done all of this work in me. I see that same counterbalance in the Bible in a couple of other places in John 15, 5, and then in Philippians chapter three, uh, 4, verse 13, where in John 15, 5, the Bible actually says that with, Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. And then in Philippians 4, 13, Paul teaches us that through Christ, we can do all things. And so I'm encouraging you to consider that. Let's cling to him in faith. Let's pursue the good things that God puts on our hearts and minds to do. And then let's just thank God for his work in us. Now, as we close, I just want to take a little bit of time to pray. So will you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for calling and saving us. Thank you for the grace and the peace that we've experienced through Jesus. And thank you, God, that you are at work to make us worthy of our calling. Thank you that your spirit is at work in our hearts, prompting us to do good works. Thank you that you empower us to follow those promptings. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be confident in our standing with you. Help us to be sensitive to the leading of the spirit in our lives. And Lord, would you help us to just act courageously to follow the spirit's leading uh, with the confidence that you're at work within us, prompting us to take steps of faith to follow you. And Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to know and serve him. And Lord, we just pray that in, in the, na the name of Jesus would be honored everywhere as this prayer that Paul has, that, that the name of Jesus would be honored and help us to live in such a way that the name of Jesus would be honored and that our lives would point people to the goodness of Jesus. And thank you, God, for just the reminder of this glorious future we have because of Jesus. And thank you that one day everything will be set right and that your people will be blessed in your presence forever. And Lord, would you help us to live with that hope today? And thank you for your grace. Thank you for your saving grace. And thank you for your daily grace that gives us hope and that keeps us humble. Lord, I pray that you would help us to just be aware at all times of your favor toward us and your many gifts toward us, Lord, especially those spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to show us uh, your love and then to prompt us to show love and demonstrate love to others. And so, Lord, um, just as Paul prayed for the church of Thessalonica there, I, I pray too for our church. And God, we pray that just our faith in you would increase. We pray that our love for you and our love for others would just increase during this season so that you're honored among our friends and neighbors. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hey, thanks for watching. We hope that you're encouraged and we want you to take next steps of faith in your relationship with God. So if you've never embraced Jesus as your Savior, uh, you've never committed your life to following Him, then we just want to encourage you to do that right where you are. When someone gives you a gift, uh, the most natural response is just to say thank you. So God has made the offer of forgiveness and His love for us as His dear children at no cost to you, but at great cost to His Son, Jesus. And I think when it dawns on you how much God loves you and that He has made a way for you to live with Him forever, then I think the natural response is just to turn to Him in prayer and to say thank you. If you'd like to talk with us more about taking uh, steps of faith to follow Jesus, we would love to hear from you. So please send us a message, either email us or contact us on our website. Um, we would love to hear from you. One of our leaders will respond to you right away. Uh, really, to anyone who's watching, please do not hesitate to reach out to us with any questions you have or any needs that you might have and, and any ways that we can be praying for you, uh, how we can support you and, and anything like that. So we hope to see you again soon.